Welcome back to Falker Figures, where today I'm going to be doing another WWF Hasbro figure unboxing video, and this one is nearly going to complete Series 6. Series 6 has six guys. I've obviously got three of them on the table just now. The Tanker, Ric Flair, and the Repo Man. And there's three I haven't got. And of those three that I haven't got, I've managed to pick up two. And um, the one that I haven't got, unbelievably, is probably one of, if not the most common Hasbros in the entire WWF Hasbro League. Um, the one I haven't got is Tito Santana, is a matador. So I say I haven't got him, I've had him, I have had him, um, and I've had him with a mind to unbox him before. But what's happened is twice he, he's, uh, come, <coughs> he's come my direction, twice I've managed to get hold of him. Um, but the first time, the card was immaculate. When I got him the first time, uh, I think it was just an eBay purchase, it was like an eBay auction that, was, that I, I kind of got a reasonable price for. And um, it was uh, it was immaculate when it turned up, and I just couldn't bring myself to to open it. And I ended up getting it graded at graded ninety, and I I think I actually raffled it on Facebook. Um, it was just too nice to open the first teal that I had, and the second teal that I had, which was more recent, that was just in the last sort of month or so. And um, what happened with that one was again I think it was an eBay purchase. I sort of just went in for an auction. I think I might have actually paid more than the original one that I bought at auction, but it was a uh, much worse condition, one that I'd been have no problem at all opening up. But when he arrived, um it wasn't evident in the pictures on eBay, but when he arrived, he was slightly sun faded. Like so the one of his arms was a slightly different colour from the the rest of his body and I just thought, well there's no point opening him then, is there? Because he's uh, he's not going to be mint loose and there's a few of my figures that I've taken off card so far that I've, I've noticed that when I've taken them off, there's a slight bit of sun fading. I mean, these guys on the table are examples. Ric Flair, slightly different colour of the top half of his body than the bottom half. And uh, Repo Man, backs of his arms, because obviously he's in the packet with his arms down. And uh, it just looks, when you see it compared to his face, it looks like his arms have just caught a little bit of sun. Um... <clears throat> you don't notice it at all when you put his arms up because obviously they're facing the card in the packet. But uh, yeah, tiny bit of sun fading really, really bugs me. Like, I, I can't live with it. So when I saw Tito was like that um, through the bubble, I thought, well, there's no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to open him up. I'm only wait for one that's that's going to be fresh when I take him off the card because I'm only going to have to replace him later on. That's what I'm facing now with uh, with the guys that have. There's about half a dozen out of the whole line that I've taken off card that I just I'm I'm not a hundred percent happy with. Just some slight sun fading, um, one or two that have just got tiny little scuffs. So I'm gonna have to go back and replace those ones once I finish doing the entire line. But we don't have Tito, we don't have the Matador. But as I said, he is the most common one in and certainly in this series, but one of the most common in the entire line, the WF Hasbro line. So the guys that I do have are a bit more exciting than him. So uh, the, the two other guys that I have are their characters, man. They're, they're good gimmicks uh, from this, this era of WWF. And the first one I have is the Berserker. <clears throat> so Berserker, um, on a reasonable card, um, I picked this up in a swap deal because I won a raffle for a Tatanka, actually. And... Um, it was a really nice Tatanka. It was like a gradable Tatanka that I had. But it wasn't going to make it in my top five for mocks. I already had him loose, so I didn't need to, to take him off the card. So I put him up there in the the, um, <clears throat> the swap offer universe. And one of the guys that's on Facebook fairly regularly, fairly active in WWF has well and in, in Ninja Turtle collecting communities on Facebook, a guy called Adrian, he said, yeah, I've, I've got uh, a Berserker that has cracked bubble I'm cracking the bubble down here so other than the crack in the bubble the card's pretty nice actually it's quite flat a bit of a curve to that corner but other than that it's a nice card but because it's got a cracked bubble that really does detract from it so Adrian was kind of thinking it's a bit of a shame because it's a nice card and it's only really got that one crack but um, 
I don't mind because I take them off cards. I don't mind if the bubbles are cracked or anything like that. So Adrian got a nice gradable to tanker, which is a more common figure than the Berserker. It's uh, you can get to tanker far even more easily than you can get the Berserker. Uh, so he got a nice gradable mock of the tanker, and I got one of the guys I need to take off card and have mint loose. So let's have a look at the Berserker. I've actually ripped the bubble a little bit there as well. No. Here he is. <clears throat> so, Berserker. This guy is, uh, it's, oh, actually, actually, he is a bit sun faded as well now that I move his, his, uh, his smoke. You can actually tell a little bit of a, he's got a bit of a t shirt suntan under there. Not too, not horrendous, but you can sort of notice that a little bit. His legs look a slightly lighter shade than his upper body, but yeah, there's a tiny bit of a t-shirt suntan on him. Um, so, <clears throat> what I was going to say there before I noticed his, his farmer's tan was Berserker. So, reused body. Uh, this is the Hacksaw Jim Duggan body. <clears throat> Who else was doing that? Was it Sergeant Slaughter that was doing that? Like, you pull the action back and it sort of flicks itself around a, a ratchet. Uh, so this is a Hacksaw Jim Duggan body, just with a different head, and obvious to that is this bit here, with where the hand hold, is sculpted to hold the 2 by 4 um, I really don't like that. I don't like that a figure who doesn't have an accessory, or doesn't have the 2 by 4 accessory, has his hand sculpted to hold the 2 by 4 accessory. <sighs> That's just annoying, man. I, I never liked that. Didn't like that as a kid. Don't like it now as a collector. Puts me off. Puts me off the Berserker completely. So it is a completely reused body with a different head on it. <clears throat> but it does have this uh, soft goods accessory. So it's got this smock. This uh, sort of, I don't know what you would call it. Uh, it's like a, a waistcoat, a vest, a jacket. Um, but that's in itself quite, quite hard to come by. Because most of the Berserkers that you find out there in the loose market don't have it. They're just a... Uh, Roman wild and free, naked, shirtless. Um, but <clears throat> so these are hard to come by themselves as accessories. But this is the only one other than the Undertaker, other than the Series 8 Undertaker, that comes with the soft goods. Um, so a bit of a special figure in that regard. There's just the Berserker and the Undertaker that have the uh, the soft good accessories. A lot of people think that Tito actually, Tito Santana, should have come with a jacket. Uh, same with Ric Flair, he could possibly have come with a robe. And uh, I've seen a few shouts that Mr. Perfect should have had a towel uh, for soft goods accessories as well. But the only two in the line that have them are Berserker and The Undertaker. So <clears throat> um, I suppose from that point of view, he is a bit of a bit of a special guy. I mean, cool figure. He's, he's got a lot of character to him. Obviously, as I said, it's a very sort of gimmicky gimmick in The Berserker. <clears throat> I think the reason that he was brought into WWF is because... I think they wanted to have some kind of Bruiser Brody uh, rip-off. Uh, if you remember, um, Berserker used to walk around saying husk, husk, and that was a Bruiser Brody thing. And Brody had, like, the sort of sheepskin wrapped around his ankles and, and <clears throat> around his boots. So I think this was, like, an attempt to recreate the Bruiser Brody gimmick without getting too close to it. That they were going to be sued for plagiarism or anything like that, or copyright infringement, but... Um, it wasn't, I mean, he was a jobber, let's be honest. He was a jobber. But pretty cool to have uh, somebody with so much character, such a good gimmick, such a sort of memorable gimmick in the, the Hasbro Loose collection. But as a figure, actually, he's not in the best of shape. The paint application to his legs is pretty weak. Like, uh, around about his uh, knee pads, a bit poor. It's kind of like a couple of splashes on his leg. And obviously there's that sun fading that I kind of noticed there, the V-shape around his neck, so not ideal I might have to go and replace him after the fact as well once I complete the whole collection but got to get them all once at least so <clears throat> and as I say he was he's quite a tough one to find he was proven pretty difficult to get a hold of so glad to get him in the way that I did and he's not in horrible shape he'll certainly do at very least as a placeholder but um, the next one I say is if Berserker is a gimmicky gimmick if Berserker is a memorable character from the WWF in the, the early 90s, then this guy, this guy is the top of the list of gimmicky gimmicks. Uh, this is uh, Papa Shango. 
So Papa Shango, Charles Wright, the Godfather. This is his early incarnation. His early run in the the WWF, where he was pushed pretty heavily. I mean, he was quite a big a big heel, a big bad guy. I mean, the most sort of I was going to say memorable, but maybe infamous appearance he had was in the WrestleMania main event <clears throat> between Sid and Hulk Hogan. Was that WrestleMania? What would that have been? Five, somewhere about then. Uh, when he was made there running and completely missed his cue and it all just completely botched. <clears throat> and I think that is kind of what stopped him from having a really big run with the belt um, or in the main event scene anyway, because I think he, he just kind of got caught napping backstage at WrestleMania and and he was held back a bit for that. But very, very solid sort of upper mid-card act at the time. And anyone that was into wrestling in that time period can remember Papa Shango. I mean, this guy would literally give you nightmares. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> not on the face of it, not a bad card, but when you look closely, not great at all. It's got scratch here. I think there's maybe been a price sticker there, a little bit of creasing and dings around the hook. But here, cards actually rip. There's a hole in the card here, um, so not really valuable at all as a, a mint on card. It's probably like one of the the worst conditions you could have a mint on card. So I got this from. Anthony, uh, Anthony Beatty, who runs one of the Facebook groups, um, Planet Hasbro, he actually asked me if I was if I needed this guy to open up because he said, I've got this one that's in pretty weak shape um, and he gave me a good deal on it. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Um, so quite good, quite nice when that happens, when people come to you and say, do you need this? So it makes it a lot easier to get the figures that you still need when people come to you. But anyway, let's get Papa Shango opened up, have a look. So, he also comes with accessories. He comes with, uh, this is the, the bone necklace, which was like the kind of source of his voodoo, voodoo power, I suppose. Um, that it, it does, it's got a little fixture that kind of goes at a little insert that puts it into his hand um, so he can hold it. And that's how that's how he would he would have been with it when he was in the WWF. He would have held that chain, that um, the necklace, the skull necklace, the bone necklace. He would have held it. Uh, as he was walking to the ring and sort of shook in front of people. But I see so many people putting it on his head like that. And he's wearing it. I don't remember, like, just as I say that, like, on the card. Is that him wearing it on the card? Yeah, he he's got it around his neck on the card. Um, but I don't remember when I was watching WWF as a kid, him wearing a necklace. I just, I remember him shaking these bones in front of people's faces and putting curses on people like that. So I would always have it in his hand like that. And you have to imagine that that is why that's there. I'm trying to think if anyone else has... I think he's the only one that has that, has that mould, the hold in the, the end of the puncher arm like that. Um, so this has probably been constructed exactly or or moulded exactly for this character and for his accessory. So that's exactly how they, I'd display it. I wouldn't have it around his neck. I wouldn't have it anywhere else. I'd have it in his hand like that. So you can shake it in the face of... Uh, of the Berserker and put a curse on him. But <clears throat> this, I think, is quite a unique mould as well. So it's got a puncher action. Oh, that's really stiff. So stiff it's stuck. There you go. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, the, but the, pun the puncher action, I mean, anytime we've seen it before now, there was kind of like a, a wider stance, a hunched over. I think Jake the Snake was the first one we've seen with it. And then his body was reused for Tito. Uh, we saw... Like um, Hulk Hogan would have been the Series 5 one with the puncher action. But even that Hulk is like a hunched over Hulk. So he's not standing sort of straight leg the way that Papa Shango is here. <clears throat> and this, from that point of view, I think is quite a unique sculpt for the line. I don't know anyone else that has it, any other uh, of the figures that have it, but it was supposed to be used for the Diesel figure that would have been in Series 12, the orange card series. So it would have been this body with a, a new head sculpt for Diesel. So if you were going to try and customise yourself a Diesel, uh, because you can get 3D printed uh, Diesel heads out there, Series 12 Hasbro heads out there, um, you would need this body <coughs> to, to make it. And uh, that's pretty cool in itself, I think, that this was this is almost the closest thing we got to Diesel, because how good would it have been to have a Diesel, a Diesel Hasbro? That would have been awesome. But that is, just looking at Papa Shango, though, that is really nice. Like, look at the, the detail in the face, in the face paint, in the hat, everything about him. He's even, his tattoos are spot on as well. You look at the tattoos and the arms. Um, 
that's awesome. That's a really nice figure. I'm trying to figure out if that's, I don't know if that's like maybe rubbed a little bit off or is that how his tattoos are meant to look? I don't know. I'll have to have a really close look. But <clears throat> on the face of it, that that is a really cool figure, man. That is up there with, whoop, just as he falls down, the best that they've produced in this line. I mean, if you look at Papa Shango and compare it to literally everybody else in this series, I mean, look at the tanker, which is the Texas Tornado reused. Look at um, Rick Flair, which is Rick Red reused. And look at um, Repo Man, which is Coco Beware reused. And then obviously the Hacksaw body for Berserker. And as I say, Tito is just Jake the Snake with a different head. But this is a completely new sculpt, completely new figure. The detail, the, the, the level of detail that they've gone to with this figure, even right down to having that little insert in his hand for his accessory, for his unique accessory. Man, this this is awesome. Like it shows you just when they put the effort in, they were capable of absolute magic. You know, Hasbro. So much of the WF Hasbro line is just laziness. It's just a different head on a, a an old body. But then there's one or two examples like this, Papa Shango, where they just smash it out of the park. And it might not be your favourite figure. It might not be the best one in the line. But as far as a representation of that wrestler goes... That's just a hundred percent. I mean, you could not do better in the the Hasbro universe than what was produced here for Papa Shango. So that is an awesome result, absolutely fantastic result. So really glad, really glad to have him. In fact, delighted to have Papa Shango. He will be going up on the shelf on display. Um, so as I say, that is five of the six from series six. I do, however, still need the most common one, the most readily available, or seemingly most readily available one, which is Tito Santana. So hopefully I can get one of him. I mean, they come up all the time, um, but it's just getting one that is in a condition that I can justify opening. I don't want to rip open a nice one. Uh, like, even though people see these videos and they say, why are you opening vintage action figures? But I'm only really opening up ones on rubbish cards. So I don't want to open up a really nice Tito. And like I said as well, I want one that's not going to be faded and sun damage when it comes out of the packet so if I can find one that, that sort of ticks both of those boxes uh, then I'll definitely get them opened up and, uh, and add them to the collection but with Tito because he's out there as much as he is you can afford to be a bit more picky with Tito with like the Berserker <coughs> who knows when another Berserker would come up or Shango for that matter when another Papa Shango or Berserker would come up to open up so you just have to take your opportunities when they come with these figures but with guys like Tito, you know you're going to get a chance at a Tito again within a few months. So hopefully the next one that comes up will be a better candidate for unboxing and I'll be able to complete Series 6. So um, yeah, and that'll be, it's getting to the business end now. Because Series 4 ticked off, Series 5 ticked off, Series 6 one figure away. Most of the series actually, other than the green cards, most of the series I'm just one figure away. So hopefully, hopefully the next few videos that you see will be me uh, completing this, the various different series of a WWF Hasbro line. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, comment. Stay safe. We'll speak soon.